shady poopsies. <laughs> How are you doing today? Well, this is going to be a story time ASMR video. And this is going to be a little sassy, I'm not going to lie. Because I have a lot to say about my past and some of the people that was involved in it. <laughs> this is all in the most lighthearted aspect. I have peace within myself and with these people now from my past and they no longer serve me or bother me but I thought I would share my story of my high school experiences. Um, I graduated high school in 2013 in May that was like almost four years ago. Wow, that went by so quick. Um, so I'm going to be sharing my high school experiences in drama from freshman to senior year, and I'm going to be listing down what happened in every single year that made my high school experience awful <laughs> because most of it was pretty dreadful. So, and you're going to be shocked by how much I went through. Uh, but doesn't everyone nowadays? High school just seems to be the hot spot for drama, right? So, um, I'll be talking about that. And if you want more videos like this where I will do story times and vlogs, please check out, for heaven's sake, my vlog channel. I'm going to list it in the description like I always do. And it's on the sidebar of my channel as well. So, all right, I have a list here. And I'm going to start off with my freshman year. Uh, I had a friend who wanted to commit suicide. And uh, I can't say their names because of privacy reasons. And there's so many people who are nosy. So they would dig up and eventually find out who it is. And I don't want to expose anybody. So I'm just going to call her Kathy. That's a fake name I put for her. So Kathy wanted to do harm to herself. I don't know why. Um, she seemed totally okay. She was always funny. And uh, we became friends very fast. Uh, the beginning of freshman year, uh, we were in homeroom together which is, for those of you who don't know, a uh, homeroom is basically where you meet up in the middle of the day in a class with students and eat, basically do your homework or eat lunch, just take a break, you know. So um, we would do that together, and um, she texted me one day, and I still somehow regret it to this day, but it's okay because there's nothing I could have done. But um, she kept texting me. My phone kept blowing up. And I didn't realize this. I was in the other, in the kitchen having dinner, right? Um, so I was downstairs. And my phone was upstairs in my bedroom. And at the time, we lived in this huge house. So of course, I couldn't hear my phone. It was on the other side of the house. Even if my ringer was loud, I can't hear it if I'm on the other side of a big house, right? <laughs> so... I go back upstairs 10 minutes after she stopped texting me. What do I see? All these messages about her wanting to end it all. And I was shaking, you guys. Oh, my God. I was so scared for this Kathy character. And I didn't know what to do. And she told me she drank a whole bottle of cough syrup. And I immediately... She didn't answer. I tried texting her hundreds of times. Just go to the hospital, go to the hospital, call the ambulance. There's the number 112. That's the ambulance number. Um, and I was scared for her. I thought something would happen. And she said, my stomach hurts. What do I do? And I said, tell your mom. Call it. Don't be scared. She was scared. And um, <sighs> it was crazy. And she eventually did. Thankfully, nothing happened. Um, so the next day after, I went to school and um, they called me down to the office. 
and I was so scared. Her mother was there with uh, one of her younger daughters. She had a lot of siblings. I think she had like at least five sisters. And it was just a mess. I mean, the mother looked shaken up, um, but I was disappointed that she never thanked me for telling her daughter, hey, get help, right? So um, I was honest and told them, look, I think I'm the cause that might have saved her. And they were saying, eh, well, she might have been okay even if she didn't get help. But I'd like to think otherwise. I mean, that can do permanent damage to the stomach lining. And, you know, so uh, that's not something you mess with medication, right? So anyway, uh, so I got out easy. I just walked out and they let me go back to my class and... I mean, no repercussions because I was just there trying to help and I was scared for the mother wanting to scold me or something for, uh, I guess, not answering my phone sooner when she started texting me all this stuff and I even showed them the text messages for proof, you know how it is when you get called to the office in school, you have to show proof from your phone. And then about a week later she finally arrived in school. And she had a band class with me. And we played, uh, I think she played the flute and I played clarinet. But I played longer than her. I've been, I played clarinet for six years, you guys. <laughs> and I quit because I got bored. Um, oh yeah, my parents were real mad at me for quitting. <laughs> Investing all that money in me just to quit. Oops, but I joined YouTube so it all worked out. <laughs> anyway, and then shortly after that... When she came back a week later, <laughs> she <laughs> was walking in her high heels and these like tight leather pants. I don't know what, why she was trying to show herself like that. I guess she was um, self-conscious because of what happened and apparently I was the cause of spreading it through the whole school even though other people found out about it before me and what happened to her. So she was mad at me for the longest time after, and we didn't talk anymore. We weren't really friends anymore. And we had this fight in the cafeteria that same day. And I remember my English teacher had to stop me and a couple security guards. It was pretty hilarious, actually. It wasn't a fist fight, but it was getting pretty close. But it was also kind of sad to see, like, you were friends with someone before and now you're fist fighting like yeah so anyway um, this was the same year when I first discovered that I was like officially gay and I was like yep I am super gay and there is no denying that so I lost quite a few friends during that time transitioning towards that um, conversation with people and people figuring out for themselves and slowly drifting apart from me because it wasn't the same frequency. They didn't get it. Uh, we couldn't have the same conversation anymore. And I met a whole lot of new people during that time and the old ones kind of just shed off, you know. <laughs> so it was a very entertaining time to say the least, and it was very humorous. A lot of funny moments happened with these new friends and new faces that I got to meet, but at the same time I was pretty disappointed that my middle school or elementary friends were no longer there for me, supporting me by my side, like I did them, because they were either scared of people coming out at the time and it was so new and they're not used to their friend doing that of course because they were so young at the time so yeah, everyone's so self-conscious their self-esteem is at their lowest and they just want to go with the popular opinion so that's kind of what happened during that time and uh, there was also a time in freshman year when I had a crush on this guy. <laughs> uh, let's
let's just say his name was Frank. I'm making up a name that I never even knew. Uh, like, I'm making up names of people that I never even knew or like were friends with. Like Kathy, I never met a Kathy. Frank, I never met a Frank. So, uh, just so I don't expose these people. <laughs> but Frank, really liked him and uh, thought he was cute, of course, um, at the time. And uh, he was in my Spanish class, in my math class at the time, I remember. And uh, yeah, I give him eye contact a few times a day, of course, and he was good eye candy at the time, so. Um, and I, I like almost couldn't take it anymore because uh, I really wanted to tell him how I feel. For some reason, at the time, I thought that was the right thing to do. Uh, so, I told him, and he ended up telling everyone he knew. I was so embarrassed. I came to school the next day, and everyone in the hallway was looking at me. I was the celebrity for the day because of what happened. And I passed out a between 5th and 6th period on my way to Spanish class, which is the class where I was going to and he was there. My friend at the time, uh, she, I can call her Bianca. Uh, I didn't, I don't know Bianca, but yeah, like I said, I'm just calling her by a fake name. Uh, she was helping me go to my class and I just collapsed. I fainted and she helped me recoup myself and I still went to the class because I had guts. I always have the bones <laughs> to face my fears and he sat right in front of me in that class. Um, he always did, but uh, just having to go back to my assigned seat was really horrible. And having to face him, and he looked so uncomfortable, to say the least. And I just sat there like... Like I just didn't care. I just sat there literally like pursed lips like... And I like stared him down for a couple of times. And I'm not kidding, I think even the teachers found out because this is so funny. It, it's so juicy. You better get your tea and sip it because I'm about to spill some tea. We were there and his friend, uh, I'll call her Jessica, uh, they would always talk in class, big blabber mouths. <laughs> and Jessica came up to me and was like, I heard you've been talking some smack. He told you to leave him alone. And I was like, that's it. I stood up from my chair and I screamed on top of my lungs all these cuss words at her. Right in front of the teacher, right in front of everyone. And the teacher defended me. And she told Jessica to sit down, take a seat. And told Frank the same. And I felt so powerful that day. I think it was so empowering for me to like speak up and still be brave and be myself because I can't change that. If I like someone who cares, it was his fault for being so childish, for um, telling the whole school. And you guys, by the way, this story time is not made up. I wish I was making this up. I actually went through all of this in high school. I would never, never lie to you. So, uh, and then after that confrontation, I really, like, I couldn't even sit in front of him anymore. And I told the teacher I had to go to the nurse and just lay low for a few minutes. So she let me go. And I was in the nurse for the maximum amount of time I could, which was 50 minutes. And she had to let me go. I pretended I had a stomachache. sleep the whole time. I was just laying there, eyes wide open, and just thinking and thinking about
about this guy and what just happened. Another experience in freshman year, I met one of my first close friends. And by close, I mean, it doesn't mean that you're good friends with them. Uh, I guess she must have thought we were good friends. But to me, I always felt sad around her because she would always talk down to me, whether she realized it or not. She would always talk smack about me to other people. And I would always end up hearing about it days later um, that she said something about me that wasn't true. And if something didn't go her way, she had to get revenge. So it was very poor behavior. And she acted like she was a hundred times her age. She didn't even act like she was like, 16, 15 at the time, so uh, she was mature and well understood, but and very smart. She acted like she wasn't, but she really knew a lot. Uh, I'll call this friend Bethany, and Bethany was extremely negative, very toxic, um, and I didn't, it took me a while to realize this until my other friends began telling me, look, you have to stay away from this girl. She is nothing but trouble, and she is up to no good. And I learned the hard way uh, when I was taken to the office on several occasions, uh, to the dean's office. And you know when you have to speak to the dean, it's a big deal. Uh, and it's embarrassing, and it ruins your reputation. And so that was not quite delightful, <laughs> to say the least. And I wish I could remember every incident, but there were so many incidents that my brain just turned it off completely. So, but you get the point. She was a very bad influence to me, and she always spoke down to me jokingly and sarcastically to make herself seem higher, even though she was really low, and she was just mad that other people were happy when she could never be. And it was really sad. I did try to comfort and care and support for her still through all of that, but it was very, very bad and poisonous for me uh, to the point where I was so distracted and my grades were just slipping. There was trouble at home from my parents that year too because of that and phone call to teachers and um, a couple phone calls to the office for those incidents. Like I've said before, if you're under... 18, they call your parents and they have to know what happened. So very embarrassing to come home and eat dinner after school and have to face them with that embarrassment. And you want so bad for your parents to be proud of you, but to disappoint them like that over and over again. I felt like my life was becoming a turmoil, basically. I just kept digging my own hole deeper and deeper. It was a very depressing time for me, and that's when my depression first began. In that same year, I also met my first long-distance boyfriend. Uh, it was horrible, again, toxic, and it was not a pleasant time. Let's just put it that way. There are some private things I won't share here and there, but uh, let's say that boyfriend, his name is Don. And Don and I, I guess, dated a couple of years, and then that turned off eventually. And now, on to sophomore year. Yes, it took me that long to explain all the drama from my freshman year, and that is only the things I can remember, and the things I feel comfortable sharing with you. That is not, of course, counting the good moments here and there, but because it was so traumatizing, I remember mostly the bad things. My first traumatic experience of sophomore year was my chemistry class and you know in high school how you have to take physics and biology and chemistry I did poorly on all three but chemistry was my absolute worst nightmare because I had no friends in there I knew nobody in there at least I had a friend or two in my physics and biology um, freshman and junior year but in sophomore year I had nobody in that class because I always took honors courses because I like to challenge myself and I got approved to do it because I guess I was pretty good in previous years but it was just awful and I didn't know what to 
say or do. Most of the time I was just the loner in that class, sitting there awkward, quietly, and everyone was talking to each other, amongst each other, and I'm just sitting there and literally in my assigned seat in the middle of the class while everyone around me is just talking. So, how great did that feel? And just not understanding the material and not really feeling comfortable enough to ask questions, um, which I kind of regret uh, that I never felt that level of comfort to just ask someone randomly, hey, can you help me? You know, I don't get this. So I did really poorly in that class and I almost bombed all of my tests in there. I'm surprised I didn't mix, like, the wrong amount of chemicals together to really, like, make an explosion, you know what I mean? Uh, so, I understood enough to do the right things, but the quality of them was not done um, correctly. And no matter how hard I would try, I would always do poorly in my labs and my quizzes. I even had another crush in there. <laughs> His name is, let's call him Banana. Why not? So, uh, Banana was a very interesting story. Uh, he ended up dating this girl who did band with me together and she like despised me. I don't know what was wrong with her. Let's call her Dog. Okay. So Dog despised me for some reason and we were playing band together for years and she ended up dating one of my longtime crushes and it was just like completely awkward and uh, you can understand the picture of the awkwardness now and sophomore year was also another year of constantly going back and forth to the dean's office and I mean he basically knew my name, my address, my date of birth, everything. I was there so often, so uh, what can I say? I mean, it was just kind of like Roll's Eyes moment, you know, the movie Medea um, with Tyler Perry, how she goes to court all the time and the judge and like sees her so often and she basically knows everything about her. So that's kind of how I felt like, oh, you're back here again. What, what, what else happened? And it was so bad where in one case, even the police was Again, none of this was my fault. I was always in there for someone else's fault. It was always someone bringing drama to me because I was always empathic and open and vulnerable to people. So I think they like to dump the problems on me and get me involved. And I don't know how uh, twisted it became, but I always was involved in other people's drama. And sometimes they would think I'm the cause of it, but I was literally just the observer and just the comforting listening ear because I want to know what's wrong, what happened, how can I help? And then as soon as I ask someone what happened, I'm involved somehow. So after a while, I learned to completely shut off and ignore people's drama. So junior year, I met my first boyfriend. And um, this is uh, not the first that I was with, so to speak, uh, but I guess the first official boyfriend, um, but he was a sociopath. It ended horribly, and this just added on to the pile that I already created from the last two years of my high school. He would spread lies and slander about me to everyone he knew. For no reason, I would do nothing but just be a caring, kind person to him, and I actually felt something there, some sort of connection, you know, and it just didn't work out. He was constantly being a jerk on and off. Um, he missed, and I have to look down at my list because there's a list of things I have to read, okay? I told you there's going to be some tea I have to spell. Let's say his name is Jonas, okay? Uh, he missed school for six weeks because he got this like infection or something and at the time I was like karma because he would do nothing but just spread negativity about me to everyone for no reason that was like his 
food at the time. So I was really happy he was out of my way for the six weeks. And after a while, his parents found out he was gay. And I still feel bad for him. But uh, they made him go to another school uh, because of that for a while. Uh, because they thought they would kind of retrain that. Of course, that never works. But yeah, so I did miss him terribly still, uh, even after all of that drama that unfolded, and it more unfolded after he came back from that school, the other school he went to, and he became angrier, and he just started letting it out on me, and I came out when I was 14, that was my freshman year, so I did it early, I got it over with, my parents were becoming cool after a while, it took him some time, but at least I did it sooner, so that took care of it earlier rather than later on in life where it becomes really difficult to address it to your family and friends. This was also the same year I had drama on YouTube with popular YouTubers bickering back and forth, and um, it was like my first official paying job. <laughs> so uh, those other channels that I did, um, they would at the time pay as much as like a part-time job, you know, but it was something just to keep me going, and um, I would come home from school, do my homework and videos at the same time, and um, commentary back and forth, and at the end of junior year, I finally let go of that very negative friend, Bethany, that I called, and because it was her senior year, she was a year older than me, it was her time to move on to college and my time to move on to my senior year of high school. So I finally got rid of her that way. Uh, she would always try to sit next to me on the bus on the way to school. I didn't have a car until like last year. So um, of course I had to go on the bus to get to school and the bus stop wait in the cold some days. And that's just how it was at the time. So even though she would have a car, she would still take the bus just to sit with me and then start drama again. It was like constantly feeding off me and I would always be so drained by the time I would get home. I couldn't even speak to my parents and I felt so, so sad that I couldn't get rid of her and I was counting the days until she would finally go away just so I could get rid of her. It was one of the most clingy attachments, negative things that I ever to deal with. And she actually mailed me a few weeks ago on my Instagram. And what did I do? Of course, I blocked her because what else are you going to do if you have nothing but terrible memories of a person, no matter how much you try to give your heart out to them and help. And no matter what you say, it doesn't work for them. They're so selfish to just go their own way and take their own advice instead of someone else's for a change. And I had some good to give, so uh, I didn't want to be a part of that, and I think a lot of people see me on this YouTube and they think, oh, you know, let me try to be friends with him, but it doesn't work that way, and I can't be friends with everyone or have the time for everyone. I would have to say of all the years, this was my most peaceful and the best year ever, and I think that's because I got rid of this Bethany character, and... She's no longer a part of my life. We wouldn't text or call. Um, and I would just remove her from all my social media, like Facebook and everything. And uh, the only drama that did happen was this fight with my old friend. She was a good friend. Uh, let's call her... What's a good name? Let's call her Candle, okay? So Candle, <laughs> I'm just looking at random things in my house and going, yeah, that's a good thing to call her. <laughs> Candle was kind of clingy too, but not so much in a negative way. I just wasn't used to that kind of like kind energy that was so clingy because everyone was always so mean to me. So like all of a sudden this kind person comes along and really wants to be your friend. And I'm like, wait, hold up. So I put my walls up, of course. And I think at the time... It was more of a social thing, too, so I was finally getting rid of the negativity and the negative people in my life, so 
I felt empowered, so I wanted to keep doing that. So I kept pushing people away, and I was like, no, no, no. And I eventually even pushed her away somehow, and I scolded her in front of everyone. I just, I don't know what came over me that day. I was so angry. I used to be such an angry person. I just yelled at her and said, look, stop it. Stop following me. Stop trying to talk to me all the time. Go back to your class in front of everyone I just shouted and uh, the other friend I had at the time, let's call her Angel uh, she saw what I did to her and she went up to me and screamed at me and I was like in tears, I was just ran to my class and she was crying too and it was a whole mess and later we got together and apologized but uh, I didn't realize how much I needed to control and I think because of those three years of having to deal with that negative friend, it got dumped on me and somehow I had to heal from that and remove that. This was the year I opened the ASMR channel and I became uh, more confident and secure in myself as a man and figuring out my identity more and just growing more stable within myself. This is the same year I had this long distance boyfriend. It's another guy, let's call him Dirt. <laughs> and Dirt uh, worked for the feds and apparently he knew Mitt Romney, whatever. No big deal, right? <laughs> but it was so stupid because all we would do was talk on the phone and we never ended up meeting and it was like that for two years before we I just said you know what I'm done with this you no longer serve me if you don't want to come see me if you're too scared of my parents bye Felicia I ended the school year strong with excellent grades and I was very happy and I had a better time with better quality friends and that's how my high school went so I want to know what happened to you. If you could leave it in the comments, you'd probably type paragraph after paragraph or why don't you maybe just share like a video clip or something. I don't know. I'd love to hear your stories. I feel like I've been through hell and back again on high school and I even forgot to mention the time where I told my first crush that I liked him in freshman year. Uh, I was getting my lunch in the cafeteria. Of course, something always has to happen in the cafeteria, right? Uh, that's when stuff is about to go down, you know? <laughs> no, I think, no wonder there were always like two security guards watching everyone at all times. I mean, what if someone starts a food fight? Anyway, this friend of my crushes walks up behind me, knocks me over. I spill my lunch all over the floor, the lunch that I my parents' money. At the time, I had no money, right? They give you money to buy lunch for school. Isn't that how it works? So, I was so hungry. I just wanted to eat. I had a long day, enough, with people staring at me all day from what just happened. Um, and to knock me over on accident, oops, sorry, just to ask me, if I really like him. And I went at it. I yelled at her until another security guard came and basically told us to stop and knock it off. So, uh, yeah, my high school was unpleasant, but I have a better mind now. And if I could do it again, I would tell myself, stay away from the drama, the negativity, do your own thing, okay? So, uh, don't fall into the trap of other people's drama. It shouldn't interest you. Just focus on your schoolwork. Yeah. Uh, so, if you want more like this kind of story time videos, I kind of did this just to promote the other channel. Go ahead and subscribe to my vlog channel. Link in the description below. And I'll talk to you boopsies in another video. <coughs> Bye. I hope this was relaxing. I mean, it's not quite relaxing to hear people's drama. It's still a story.